this occasion of World Blood Donor Day and in the effort of bringing awareness about rare blood groups, here is a quick and interesting story of a rare blood groups from the books of history. So let's listen to the tyranny of King Henry VIII. So King Henry VIII descended the throne when he was 18 years and he was regarded as a charming ideal king from the traditional English heritage who was jovial, charismatic, delighted in sports, martial arts and was also highly intellectual. But all of these pride didn't last for so long as he grew older. Around 40 years of age, he was found to be a brutal tyrant and was worst of all the English monarchs who also suffered from reproductive failures despite multiple pairings. His execution rates were so high that it approximated to about 7 million deaths annually. This is the family tree of King Henry VIII and here we see Joaquita Bedford was his great grandmother who is going to play a major role in our story. There were a lot of medical diagnostic theories that were postulated to explain his sudden behavioral change and here are a few of them. So to start with morbid obesity and diabetes. It was reported that King Henry VIII was used to be moved around with mechanical devices because of his obesity and uh, people speculated this could be one of the reasons for his behavioral change. The next one being syphilis because it was at that period of time this disease was spreading at a greater rate in the European continent. But there was total absence of congenital syphilis in his legitimate and illegitimate children. Also, there were no reports of syphilis in his sexual partners. The last hypothesis is the head injury because King Henry VIII was reported to have suffered from a severe head injury while jousting in the year of 1536 and went unconscious for about two hours. And he suffered a severe frontal lobe damage and pituitary damage. But none of these reasons could convincingly explain the nature of his aggressive behavior as well as his inability to make male hairs. So one of the most popular hypotheses was put forward by Whitney and Kramer when they suggested a genetic cause for his behavioral and reproductive failure. They put forward two reasons. One is the Kell blood group antigenicity and the other one is McLeod syndrome. Kell antigen is one of the rare blood group antigens where any mismatch can lead to abortions, stillbirth and neonatal death. And McLeod syndrome is caused by a set of recessive mutations and deletions in the XK gene which can lead to behavioral change, psychosis, dementia and neural disorders. So now coming to how was this mystery solved? How did Whitney and Kramer's hypothesis convincingly answer all the questions? And here we have the discovery of Jacquita's curse, which says that King Henry VIII would have maternally inherited this K plus antigen and all his sexual partners would have been K minus, which would have led to the K related hemolytic disease of fetus and newborn. This explains the reasons for multiple miscarriages and neonatal deaths as well as explain why only four offspring survived and three out of them were from the first pregnancies. So now coming to why did he become so arrogant and why he never had any male hair. King Henry VIII was hypothesized to have had McLeod syndrome which is a genetic disorder caused by mutations in a gene spanning the X chromosome that encodes for the XK protein. This XK protein is very much essential for the proper expression of Kell antigen on the surface of human RBCs. So to put it very precisely, King Henry VIII had a K allele inherited maternally. He also had McLeod mutations which led to the weakened expression of this Kell antigen making him look phenotypically like a K minus person. But unfortunately, Henry's male children would not inherit the X chromosome from Henry and they will not be having any of the McLeod mutation which would weaken the expression of their Kell antigen and hence they succumb to adverse hemolytic reactions during their birth. And this is how the story of 
a charming king who turned into a brutal tyrant ends such interesting stories on rare blood groups keep fascinating us so on this day let's all be aware of the rare